Hello everybody, welcome to the preview show outside Old Trafford, the scene of United demolition of ammonia tonight. I'm jumping the gun, I know. Yes, uh, anything can happen on a European night, but when you look at this game, how the first game went last week over in Cyprus, then you would expect Manchester United to be coming away with all three points here tonight, making it nine in the table in this group and looking quite solid for qualification. Obviously, the bigger game in this group is to come, which is Sociedad on the last day, which is away over in Spain. And I think that one will determine exactly who takes top honours in this group and avoids that round of 32 and all the Champions League teams which going off the way results are at the moment in the Champions League could be some big hitters so the importance of games like this the importance of playing the right team and playing probably a strong team to get through is massive because as we know we've already had disruption this season we've had games that have been cancelled and all them games have to be squeezed in in January the last thing Manchester United need is to be coming straight back in to another two games against possibly a Champions League team, like I said, in February when Europe starts again and have all of these fixtures after the World Cup and January, like I said, on top of that. It is important that Manchester United just get business done and taken care of in this Europa League. And I think that is what will happen tonight. Ten Hag already alluded yesterday in his press conference, alluded to yesterday in his press conference about playing the strongest team, adapting each team to play the opponents that they've got that particular day and that game day. And I think he will go strong with his team tonight. What Ammonia bring here tonight, we've already seen. It isn't much of a threat, I would say, and it's no disrespect to uh, Ammonia, that their threat came from mistakes from Manchester United. Now, mistakes we are ironing out. We're not making as many at the moment. They are still there, and we've seen it with the likes of the goal we conceded against Everton and Casemiro was robbed of the ball. And we've seen it in the corresponding fixture last week here. Not here, but in Cyprus against our opponents tonight, Ammonia, when obviously Malassia lost the ball from a poor pass from Sancho and they scored the goal and somehow went in front when United were dominating. I think that's where United's threat is at the moment, it's ourselves. And I think United capitulating in certain games, and it happened a lot last season, teams were reading that, were feeding off that. It does seem to me like that has been, it's not been completely ironed out, let's not, let's not say that, because like I said, Casemiro's mistake, Malassia's mistake in the last couple of games, just them switch off moments which are costing United, because you look at stats from all previous games at the moment, it's like one shot, one goal for our opponents. We're keeping everything to a minimum, but the minimum is killing us right now and where, where these games are being made harder. Manchester United's full concentration needs to be on this game tonight and moving forward then we'll deal with the likes of Newcastle at home at weekend. But I am expecting Manchester United to comfortably win tonight and that's not me being arrogant at all. One win in 28 says everything you need to know about, <laughs> about Ammonia. A uh, big gust of wind there, people. Sorry about that. You know what I mean, it just gets crazy around here in Manchester, even though you can't hear anything. <laughs> but you're still with me, I'm still stable, we're moving. Uh, but like I said, our, our opponents tonight don't really cause as many problems. We cause our own problems. As I said then, 27 games, sorry, 28 games after last, after last week, one win. They haven't won ever on English soil. I don't think they've ever won away from home. Everything is pointing towards a Manchester United landslide, you could say. And again, it seems disrespectful that I'm saying that to our opponents tonight. But, let's be fair, from what we've seen, I think everybody's expecting it tonight. Everyone is expecting a few goals. I think your safe bet is more than 3.5 goals tonight, I will say that. But uh, in terms of how we approach it, I think it will be a case tonight, personally, me for Ten Hag of going out early, expect goals in the first half, expect this game to be put to bed before half time, then we may see the changes. We may be seeing five, I think we will see all five changes tonight. I do think United will have this game won early and I think Ten Hag will start to rest players that he needs probably for Newcastle at weekend. Will Scott McTominay come in? I think he might and then I don't know because with Victor Lindelof being in the press conference yesterday, it usually means that that player is going to be in the team and I we didn't get to the press conference yesterday, uh, that was another problem, but the question I wanted to ask really was, in terms of players that come out of the team, uh, it could be an injury, and then does that player then have to fight his way back into the team like players that have been out of form? 
So Molassi being out of form, quite rightly, Luke Shaw's coming now and holds that spot. Varane was more unlucky and he was playing well, but tonight's going to be key, I think, in how Ten Hag is going to go forward. If for any reason at all you come out of this team, you have to fight your way back in. There's no given right that you will come straight back in, even if you get injured and even if... <laughs> and even if you was unfortunate and have been playing well before that injury. That's what you've got to look at. And I think with Lindelof being in that press conference yesterday, I think this is the way he's going to go forward. Quite clear that every single player in this squad now knows that when you're in, you have to perform to stay in. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait your turn again. Lindelof took his. We had two games, two wins, and you would say deserves your spot in the team. There's a run on the bench, though. That's the difference. And this is now... The big question, because he's done it with Ronaldo. He's had no problem with playing one of the world's greatest off the bench. Ronaldo's earned his spot back in the team now. His favourite in pre-season was Martial, but now he's injured again. It looks like it's going to be Ronaldo going forward. And this is where everyone's like waiting now when it gets into like the, the thick part of the season, when the games are coming thick and fast. Will he rotate? Oh, will he just use that five substitutes in the games and keep playing the same team and the same team? The one time he changed it a little bit was here against Sociedad and that went completely wrong. We lost all cohesion, it wasn't working and then he seemed to learn from that and then the two lesser games you would say in terms of Sheriff and Ammonia, no disrespect, he played a stronger team than what he did. I think he's learned very fast the capabilities of his team and one or two changes possibly. With Scott Metomini being injured for the Newcastle, uh, not injured, suspended for the Newcastle game, will he come in tonight? I still think he's going to play Casemiro. I really do. I think we may see Scott McTominay come on, maybe give Casemiro another 30 minutes break. Maybe he plays 60 minutes. I think he's just going to go with playing his strong team from the start now and then judge them off that, judge the fitness from there and move on from that because we've seen what happened here when he changed it against Sociedad and I think he has had his fingers burnt with that. And he isn't afraid to make them changes when we do underperform. But every time we've won, he's not changed it. I think that's why we're expecting a very similar team tonight. Lindelof will play alongside Martinez. Then you've got Luke Shaw in on the left. And I would say Dello on the right. Midfield, I think, will be the same again. Casemiro, Bruno, Eriksson. I do think that them changes and substitutes will come in, though. I think you may see the likes of Alanga get game time tonight. I still don't think from the start. And if Jaden Sancho does get a chance, he is going to have to take it. Like I said, this is the importance of these games, not just for the club, not just for Manchester United qualifying, but these games now are massively important for players like Sancho, like Alanga, because their game time is going to be disrupted now. They know that Ten Hag doesn't really bother, isn't bothered who you are. Club captain, Cristiano Ronaldo not playing well, you're not in the team. So tonight, if Sancho and Alanga get that chance, they have to take it. Otherwise, you're just not going to be in the team. You're not going to play the games that you want to play. And with a World Cup coming around, specifically in the case of Jadon Sancho, then he could see himself in the wilderness. He really could. And this this could be one of them, them cases where Sancho doesn't actually get to fulfil his potential. I thought he had turned the corner. I can remember talking about this a few weeks ago when the game against... Sheriff away when he played really well. I think he's seen a couple more performances, but then he fell off against City and I was like, I was taken aback a little bit. I didn't expect that from him. I thought he was going to push on, but he's just not done that. He has to look at himself now and do like the likes of Rashford have done, work that bit harder. The competition for places in this team now has been as tight as it ever been. Because it's not just, no disrespect to a Lango, a youth team player coming in fighting for a position in the team. You've got an £85 million pound man fighting an £80 million pound man for that right-hand side berth in Sancho and in Antony. You've got to look at everything now going forward in this and go, it's a positive, it's a massive positive that Manchester United have got all of these competitions for places and it's going to be a case of fight for it, perform, or you're not going to be in the team. That's it. Steve Arnold just going past there, just happens on videos like this, you know what I mean? <laughs> Random stuff, gusts of wind, executives walking past. Anyway, yeah, that is pretty much where we're at with this game. I do believe it's going to come down to Manchester United's application early doors, game put to bed by half-time, and then ring the changes in the second half. I've gone all in on 5-0 for United tonight. I just feel like it's a chance, and I think players are just going to 
take the opportunity when they're coming off the bench or when they're starting, if you are starting this game. So for me, I see it, I can't see it any other way from what I watched last week. I think it will be too much of an occasion for our opponents who've never won here. And Manchester United will see this game out and I think pretty much solidifying, solidifying our place for qualification for the knockouts. But there's bigger fish to fry. This is why these games are important. Stay in the winning mood, stay on that winning run because Sociedad are going to do exactly the same. And then come November when we have that last game in Sociedad and it's all winner takes all for the top of the group, United are going to have to be ready. Can't afford any slip-ups. I'm not expecting any. I'm expecting United to smash Ammonia tonight. And I'll say it again, it's no disrespect, but that is just how I'm seeing this game. 5-0 for me, let me know what you think. Drop your comments in, comment section below. Who would you start? Would you ring the changes? Give me your score predictions as well, everybody. Like, share and subscribe to the United Stand. Cheers for tuning in, everyone. I'll see you at the game.